Hey guys, so this video obviously comes off with a different whole kind of vibe to it, but um, I've got a question for you. And it's something I've been thinking about for a little while now. And something that I've been starting to ask myself each and every day is, why do you believe in what you do? And while I kind of bring this forth to you and kind of ask you that question, kind of explain what I'm even talking about, right? Um, I do have some fun things to open. So we're gonna see what's inside this box of OP04 and we got this little dash pack. So we're gonna start off with this for starters. All right, so let's just get this underway here. Um, I haven't opened any of these yet. So let's see uh, what we start off with. Okay. Opening up, we have, hey, there's the poster child on the uh, dash pack right there. We got the Shira Hoshi. Nice. This is probably the one you want most out of this. This is very cool. Nice little rarity upgrade bump for uh, Shira Hoshi for yellow decks. So very nice draw three trash too. Uh, definitely good thing to get out of your life pile, or you can just throw it on field and then uh, Katakuri it into your life next turn if you need to uh, replenish your hand. So yeah, great pull right there. Very nice. I love that Shira Hoshi artwork. It's just awesome. Um, <laughs> anytime I see Shira Hoshi, I just think of like Luffy's dumb nicknames for like characters or people that... He hasn't like bothered to like learn their name. So whenever I see Shiro Hoshi, I just think of Wimpy Hoshi because she just cries all the time. <laughs> so like, but I think like out of all the characters that Luffy has dumb nicknames for, it's gotta go to Kid for sure. Him calling Kid Jaggy, which has nothing to do with his name whatsoever. is the funniest thing to me. We've got Orlumbus, uh, Charlotte Barbawa. We got Tom, Ibamatsu, Don Quixote Family, Playgrounds, Ideo, Leo. Oh, the, the Adeo and the Leo combo. Nice. We got the Enchanting Vertigo dance. We got Sasaki. We got Who's Who and Appel to start things off with. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think my take goes to Jaggy for sure, which is, of course, Eustace Captain Kid. Uh, let me know what your favorite uh, dumb Luffy nickname is because I definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, but let's go into, like, the main topic of what I wanted to talk about today is, like, why do you believe in what you do? And I think, like, honestly, that's something that not all of us really ask ourselves like we don't wake up and be like oh why am i getting up out of bed today why am i doing this why am i going to work for example and i think maybe that's part of the reason why so many people are unsatisfied with their jobs and what they do right because like a lot of us go to college or a trade school just to get a degree or something and then we go out to our job for just that reward at the end oh we're just doing this to make a salary or something like that so there's no like real passion behind the things that you do right oh and we got the capone gang beige <laughs> to kind of derail what i'm saying right here wow look at this nice alternate art capone so if you want to bling out your life pile for katakuri this is a nice little addition right there there he is with his castle devil fruit so his whole fortress right here that he builds out of himself. That was a big moment in uh, Whole Cake during the tea party. Um, they're all holed up inside uh, Capone's little castle here, wondering, okay, how do we get ourselves out of this situation? Uh, you got Big Mom raging and punching Capone like while he's transformed into this big castle. And then you've got Caesar inside freaking out, like everyone's got hockey, like I can't even use my gas powers and run away, like I'm just gonna get beat up. <laughs> so yeah. It was definitely a high stakes moment for uh, the Straw Hats and as well as the Fire Tank Pirates, like being like, okay, what's our next move? How do we get our, ourselves out of this, right? All right, so let's get back to it. So that's the thing, right? It's like when it comes to like the why behind the things that you do in life, there's got to be like a degree of like passion behind the things that you do, right? So my thing is that like, when I do things like this, like this video, for example, this doesn't come with like some sort of intrinsic reward out of it, right? Like I don't do this to like gain subs or get a huge amount of subscribers. I do this because I genuinely love One Piece and opening cards and I love talking about this stuff. There's so many times where I'm editing videos and I'm doing these cool little moments for big pulls and then I end up rewatching scenes from the anime and it just gets me to feel those moments all over again. And it's just a really cool experience. And I guess like, oh, there's Yamato, nice. Good, super rare right there. And this Yamato artwork just rules. It's awesome. The alternate art is even better too. Yeah, cause like, I think that's the main reason why I do this. I, I don't do this just because I wanna build a huge subscriber base. I wanna like 
make some sort of impact through what I do. And I have a genuine like love and appreciation for One Piece. And it's my hope and my belief that like hopefully through my videos, just by talking about and being in, just enjoying One Piece for what it is that like, you know, I get somebody who hasn't even watched this stuff yet and doesn't even understand what it is to like try it for the first time and see what it's all about. And having more people to talk about this with, I think, oh, the Miss All Sunday. That's my first super of uh, her. I love Nico Robin. She's awesome. One of my favorite Straw Hats for sure. She's probably top three for me. <laughs> so that's pretty sweet. I actually definitely wanted to get one of these. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's through my hope that like by talking about this stuff, showing my appreciation for One Piece, that I get somebody else into it. Um, I think make, one of my passions is like being able to make some sort of positive impact for others is one of my drives for like everything that I do. And it bleeds into what I do for my job too. So I think that's always important is to have a belief in what you do behind the things that you do rather than just like I'm going for an intrinsic reward. It's just I'm just doing this for the sake of this, not because I love doing what I do. And I think, again, that's why people are sometimes dissatisfied when it comes to, like, their work-life situation. Um, and I think my advice to you guys, and that's why I'm asking you as well, like, why do you believe in what you do, is, like, save time for the things you love and enjoy in life. Because um, I think that's really, really important. And then here's, we got the VV Dawn right here. Looks really sick. I love the VV. Yeah. Save time for your hobbies, save time for your passions in life and make sure that you continue to do those things. Don't let yourself be bogged down by your daily life and the things you got to deal with. Save time for the things that you love. We got Otama, Ideo, we got Apis, uh, Moscato, Flapping Thread, Giats, King, and Rebecca. Because that's the thing, right? Like when you genuinely love what you do and people see that, they're going to rally behind you. You're gonna have people in your corner that love and appreciate the same things that you do. You're gonna attract people in your life that also enjoy these things, that also love what you do as well. They're gonna be like, hey, I like this person. I like what they're about. I'm gonna jump into their corner. We've got Senior Pink and Roronara Zoro. This is a cool Zoro artwork. Love that. The East Blue Zoro, he's drawing his sword. He's like ready to go in for that swing. It looks really good. I think it's the same artist. Uh, his name is Akira Ogawa. Uh, he's the one that did the uh, alternate art Zoro in uh, OP01 um, for the Rush Zoro. And that that's a sick artwork too. So good to see him uh, swinging out here with more awesome artworks. So yeah, I'll give you like an example because like this is something I witnessed in my own personal life because like my brother, for example, really loves biking. And for most people, maybe biking or exercising or whatever is just like, oh, hey, I'm just doing this to lose weight. It's like the what or the how behind what you're doing, right? Uh, what am I doing this for? Oh, I'm doing it to lose weight. How am I going to do it? I'm going to go run and I'm going to bike and all this stuff. But like if you don't believe in what you do. Oh, I believe in biking because I genuinely love it. It makes me feel alive. Like that's what he's told me before. It made me genuinely happy for him. I was like, yeah, dude, that's really cool. Like I love seeing that. Like I love him coming back and telling me about a trail that he's been on. Or recently he went to a competition, like a, like a small one, not like we're not talking a national thing, mind you, but like a cool little event where like he had to beat a train and it takes the train like an hour to reach the destination. And he told me he beat it by over 20 minutes. And we're talking like a really long trail. Like he spent like, I think roughly 50-ish minutes or so getting to where he had to go. And the train was running slow that day too. So it helped everybody else out that was uh, struggling. But um, I'll, I'll say this now, he definitely wasn't. And uh, it was just really cool seeing him come home with that. And uh, he got a nice little, uh, like a little memento, like with his name plaqued on it. It was like a little uh, train railway spike. It had his name and like his placing and everything. It was really cool. And I could just see the level of joy in his face and him telling me that he was like tearing up in the car because it was like the first time, like in a long time where he felt like truly proud of himself and happy with like what he was doing. It was just really cool to hear him say that. And 
that's what I mean when I say like, oh, Sanji, nice, super rare. That's what I mean when I say like, you gotta find that thing in your life, find that thing you're genuinely passionate about that makes you proud of what you do. And people are going to rally behind you and they're gonna be, they're gonna want to be a part of that. And for me, while, you know, video editing and, uh, you know, talking about One Piece and all that good stuff is not as grand or as cool as biking, maybe it's cool in its own way. I think for some of you watching, I think you think One Piece is cool. Hopefully you do. I mean, otherwise, why are you watching, right? Um, but yeah, I think like just having that deep love for something is something that you got to have in life. You've got to keep and hold on to that no matter what. We've got Spiderweb and we've got the alternate art Dawn. There's number two right there. You always get two in these boxes, so... I guess that's the thing about, like, YouTubers sometimes, right? They, like, start off the video and they're like, yeah, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell, and all that garbage. And it's just like, yeah, cool, I could, like, watch somebody else and they'll say the same thing. Like, it just gets annoying to listen to, right? Like, no one wants to watch a video and just hear all that stuff thrown at them. And plus, like, a lot of people understand at this point that, like, liking and subscribing, like, helps a YouTuber grow and things like that. But that's not the main reason a YouTuber should even be doing it in the first place, right? Almost spoiled myself there. They should be doing it because they genuinely enjoy the stuff that they do. They want that... You should have that passion bleed out to your audience, right? Like, I just do this for the sake of it. I just do it because it's fun. That's the only reason I do this. And there's the Corazon... Uh, secret rare. So there's your standard secret rare for the box right there. And this is another reason why I'm so excited for set five because set five is just going to be absolutely insane in terms of the uh, like cards and the things to talk about in it, especially, uh, you know, Luffy's moments at the very end of uh, Wano. And I think you know what transformation I'm talking about. Dellinger, we've got Law, Gun Madoki, Miss Merry Christmas, Ideo, Jack, Diablo Jambe, we've got Isho, Frankie, and ulti. Now we've already we've already got our two hits. Who knows? I really don't know. I mean, we've just started the right, left side of the box, and we already have two hits here. So this could be the very end of the box already, or we could have one extra surprise in here. So let's tear through the rest and see what else we got. But yeah, I'm very excited for set five. I think set five is going to be so hype. It's going to be so much fun. Um, it's going to have some great cards and some great opportunities to get some amazing hits. So I'm very much looking forward to opening that set up when the time comes. We've got Paris Sparrow. We've got Mach Vice. We've got Mr. Two Bon Cure. We've got Leo. We've got Diamante. And uh, there is a Sugar Super Rare. Uh, I was trying to uh, film Dofi out on the simulator. And this card is low-key kind of toxic against your opponent when they're trying to, like, bring stuff out in the field and then you end up resting an extra character and they're trying to, like go aggressive on you. So like those red decks uh, really don't appreciate this card very much. That's for sure. Um, and Sugar with her Hobby Hobby Fruit is uh, definitely a menace to deal with for sure, especially uh, during the uh, Dress Rosa arc. Yeah, her being able to just turn somebody into a toy and then like they just, everyone that loves and cares about you just forgets you even exist. That's like gotta be one of the worst fates ever. Seeing so many citizens in uh, Dress Rosa, just toys, and like, that's just people's loved ones, and they just have no idea that they're even there anymore. It's just, that's a dark premise for sure. Being that Dofi just completely runs this country, and people idolize him, and they have no idea that he's just low key, this tyrant, this mob boss that's just ruining the country uh, from the outside in, or inside out, I mean. Okay, let's see what's in this pack. Yeah, that's what's cool about this set because there's a lot of parallels between Dress Rosa and Alabasta with Crocodile. Two guys that have just from deep down within the country tried to tear it apart from the inside out. And then you have the Straw Hats come in and just uproot them and get rid of them. We've got the Sabo, super rare. That's another nice super right there. Uh, very good for Rebecca. Very nice blocker. And you get to kind of replenish your hand and look for those specific cards that you need to help you deal with your opponent. So it helps Rebecca deal with red, especially aggressive Zoro decks, so you can get the Kiros and potentially other combos like that, especially with the, uh, what's his name, or Lumbus, being able to reduce the cost of characters, and then you have the Kiros knock them out. Or even use 3,000 worlds. You can uh, use 3,000 worlds to uh, deal with anything that's nine cost or below, which is really nice for Rebecca. It helps her control the tempo of the game, and helps her potentially swing it around and be aggressive and go for the win. But uh, 
I think I need more practice with Rebecca. I was trying against a Zoro deck. Um, and I think I need to either revamp the deck or just learn it better because there were just times where the Zoro was just rolling me and there wasn't really much I could do. I couldn't even like get the game to a state where like I could start going on the offensive. I was basically on defense the entire time. There's like straight up nothing I could do to reach the end game. I was oftentimes losing too early. So I guess that's the thing against uh, Zoro is like, you've gotta be able to survive that push, right? Otherwise there's no chance for you. Uh, we got the Chin Jiao, Miss Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm not gonna say all that, but uh, that's one of the Dofi's quotes right there. We got Otama, we got Eric. <laughs> there he is, there's Eric, the filler guy. You've got the, you've got Dracul, Mi Dracul Mihawk, you've got Edward Newgate, you've got Gold D Roger, and then you have Eric. Look at this dude, it's Eric. Everyone's favorite One Piece character. Uh, he is filler, by the way. Crocodile, we got Olin, and we've got Bad Manners Kid Course. So yeah, my advice to you, and that's why I asked you that question today, is like, find that why in your life. Find your belief, the thing that you genuinely are passionate about that you want to do. And show that to people, show that love to, to the world, show like the thing that you enjoy the most. And I think you'll be able to find other like-minded people that also enjoy that as well, that will also rally behind you and say, yeah, I love that too. I'm all about it, and I love that you love that as well. Columbus, this is like literally the cornerstone of Rebecca Dex. Um, so yeah, him be able to just simply once per turn reduce a cost by four, and then just being able to knock out characters with just the general strategy with black is very good. I mean, this guy is absolutely vital to Rebecca's strategy. Karu, we got Rabion, we got Ipan Matsu, uh, Don Quixote Family, Ideo, nice blocker for Rebecca. Playgrounds, we got Harujin, we got Usopp, Gum Gum King Kong Gun. That's like the ender for Rebecca. We got we got the Rebecca pack out here. Treble and Oh, that's a triple hit right there. We got the Mr. Five. Um, not the best hit you can possibly get though. That's a definitely a super dud right there. <laughs> I think he's like the cheapest alter art out of the set. Uh so we got not the Baroque works, but the Broke works out here. <laughs> I think he's like two bucks or something. That's hilarious. Um, funny enough, I was opening some double pack sets and I already got this guy, so I don't necessarily need an extra copy of him. I would have loved something else, but hey, it is what it is. You're not always going to get those big banger pulls out of every box that you're going to open. So, hey, we got Capone though. That's new for me, so I will take that. All right, four packs to go. Let's see... So there's probably gonna be maybe a super or two, something else left in here, but that's what we're gonna end on here. We got the Ice Oni, Charlotte Barvoa, Oimo and Kashi, Daddy Masterson, Randolph, Yokozuna, Happiness Punch. We got Charlotte Pero Sparrow. We got Toko, very wholesome artwork of Toko right there. We got Queen, Frankie, and Ulti. Yeah, so Mr. Five's whole shtick with his Devil Fruit is like he can literally pick his nose and turn it into explosives, <laughs> which is a very bizarre Devil Fruit power, but that is what he does. Uh, Pound, Kuro, Mr. 13, and Miss Friday. We got Gun Madoki, we got Nami, we got Roki, Eric, there he is again, there's Eric. There's Iceberg, Enchanting Vertigo Dance, Treble, and a Luffy Super Rare. That's also a nice one to get. So this is your closer for Rebecca. So gear four. I love like, and this is the other thing I really like about the card game is they take characters like this and the mechanics of the character make sense with the actual anime and manga. So like Luffy, when he first activated gear four against Dofi, he wasn't able to use it very long. It like basically burned him out super fast. And it makes sense with this. It's like a super hyper offensive card. You just go out swinging and then you swing twice and then you can't activate him again. He's just dead for an entire turn. You can't use him again, which makes sense. It makes sense in the anime. Luffy tired himself out and he needed to like regain his hockey after 10 minutes of fighting Dofi. So I think that's a really cool mechanic. And like, I saw a lot of things like that too with things like the Whitebeard leader where he's just losing life every turn. It makes sense. Like White, Whitebeard's this insane guy who just takes so much damage and then he's just incredibly resilient. Um, so I love that the mechanics of the game agree with the characters themselves too. It's a very, very cool concept. And I love that they keep that kind of stuff in mind when designing these cards too. We got Kiros, 
And there's Kinemon, the absolute savage himself. So this is the flashback Kinemon, looking like an absolute fool right here. You're gonna have that though, you know, you, sometimes, you know, you gotta meet somebody like Kozuki Odin to get your life in order. <laughs> For Kinemon, that was the case. Hey, that actually makes sense, you know, Kinemon didn't really believe or do anything. You know, he was just rum rummaging through the streets like an absolute idiot. And then he meets somebody inspirational like Odin. Somebody to rally behind, somebody to believe in, and he became one of his scabbards, one of his, uh, one of his bodyguards, Kuro, Stussy, Golden Week, Trafalgar Law, Roki, Mr. 13 and Miss Friday, Hera, Lao Ji, Gum Gum King Kong Gun, Mr. 5, and Gum Gum Red Rock. So that's a great finisher right there. That is your awesome blue removal card. So this is Luffy punching down Kaido, that initial first punch to start off Roof Piece. The ultimate battle on top of Onigashima. So that's an awesome end ending card right there. That was our final pack, by the way. Um, and yeah, like what I, like I was saying with Kinemon, like he he really is a parallel of us in our everyday lives. It's like, you know, sometimes we lose our way or sometimes we don't really know why we're doing the things that we do. And I think that's incredibly important to have. And keep that in mind for yourself too, moving forward, like with whatever you do in life. Find that passion and find the things that you love to do. And don't ever let that stuff go. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and uh, subscribe. You know, if you enjoyed this stuff and you want to stick around, I'd love to have you. Um, but that's all. That's going to be all for me. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching and taking time out of your day to, uh, you know, watch this uh, content. And I really appreciate it. So without further ado, I'm going to end things off here. I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.